don't mess around, okay? Welcome, everybody. This is the Friday morning reschedule of the Thursday uh, afternoon evening webinar. Uh, Got to get all of our uh, disclaimer out of the way here so we can get on some charts and get to some trades. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, and there's a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. Okay, that being said, today's topic is trading two contracts with support and resistance. However, we are going to mix in some other topics to keep it interesting. Over to screen one. Excuse me, you should see a YM chart. Now, what's unfortunate is, uh, for, for those of you listening um, that aren't in here, uh, we, we had to reboot, and we actually uh, got a little bit of a late start here, which is okay. We'll get through it. Um, I was trying to show this trade. This trade was actually setting up. As soon as I did the disclaimer on the first time around here, about 15, 20 minutes ago, uh, I, I, just real quick, I'm going to show this for everybody. Does everybody see this this trade that's set up here? Okay, let me let me do this. Let me ask another question. What is the trade that's set up here? And this would have been right after we opened the webinar room here. Can anybody tell me what trade set up here on YM? In fact, they also happen on NASDAQ. I'm going to show that in a minute. It's trying to happen on crude. What is the trade that's set up here? about 15, 20 minutes ago on YM. This is the whole support resistance things we're talking about, right? So trading support and resistance. Anybody? We'll give you 10 seconds. Where's the trade over here? We're looking at the right-hand side of the YM chart. <coughs> Excuse me. What was the trade? Right. It was a short trade. Now, let me help you out. And let me I'll do this on Nasdaq too. I'll do this on Nasdaq too. In all fairness to everybody here, we have a resistance level and a support level and we'll use our lines to, to show them right here. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take uh, oh, no, I'll leave predictor on for now. Yeah, it was a short it was a short. It was absolutely a short. So let's put a couple of lines on here where support and resistance are sitting. Right there. So if you took this short, and let's be clear, let me blow up and talk about what's happening here. So so, so, so uh, we'll talk about this in a second. Here we were clear, clearly all morning in a very powerful, strong uptrend. All the markets ran like 80 to 100 ticks. All the equity markets just ran like a big dog all morning, 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 morning. Here we come to 8 o'clock. Now, what started to happen here, and I'll just show you and how an easy way to look at this, is we came down, and this is what we look for when we're going from up or down into sideways consolidation. Here we come down, we check just above the mid band at the swing at 82. She, YM tries to take one more shot up towards the top. Now notice, and this is important, we call this live in the room whenever we can. Notice it can't get back up to here, to this 900 mark. It gets up here just above the swing at 90, and then it rolls over and it takes out the mid-band. Now that in and of itself we know is not significant. Then we go into consolidation. Now, can anybody tell me what this trade is right here? This bounce up to the mid-band here. What is that? This trade right here. Think about it. Long, powerful uptrend. We bounce. Can't get back to the highs. Take the mid-band out. Consolidate underneath the mid-band. Break down to where? Yeah, Phantom. The outermost band. So, in it all the other webinars that I do, you've heard this a thousand, thousand times, I don't know, hundreds of times, scores of times out of me. The, the prevailing rule, if you want to keep it really, really simple, is that when you're, as long as you're within the confines of that outermost band, you still can trade the uptrend. So you'd be buying here. That's a phantom bounce. Okay? 
You see those in the room all the time, live. Now, did the, did the trend change on this chart? Yes or no? And if your answer is yes, where did it change in terms of either time or level? I'll give you 15 seconds. Did the trend change on this chart? And if it did, where did it change? Either price or price being the, the level over here. You could call out a number. Here's all the numbers in bold. Or time-wise. Time's down here. Pacific time. I'm California. 12 seconds left. Did the trend change, yes or no? And if it did, what time and what level did it occur at? Nine seconds left. Trend change on this chart. It's important you know this because if you don't know if the trend has changed, then you can't be pretty tough to trade it, right? you got to know whether you're taking longs or shorts. Are you taking longs or are you taking shorts? Time's almost up. All right, good. We got some good answers coming in. 812, 820, around uh, 1871. Okay, good. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So remember our rule of thumb. As long as this outermost band is is kind of hanging in there. So so what I'm saying is is that you know you could have been trading a, a range here if this level right here held, right? It didn't. It plowed right through it, and you went into a fresh swing low. Now you can see background starting to change. Uh, you know, the, uh, the bars are turning red. We're getting a stair step down on all the bands, including the mid band. So now we're looking for shorts, right? We're looking for shorts. You actually got a little roll over here. You got a little roll over here just under the mid band. And then the short we were talking about when we first opened up here is this short roll over up here off of resistance. You could have used your line tool or your ray uh, object trader box to box it in, bias to the short side. You'd be filled short on this bar right here. Your first target is down at support. You would have faded that. You would have, you know, the swing is at 88, uh, 42. You would have tried to get out here just under 50. And now you'd be trailing a stop in the trail stop. Everybody asks, well, where's your trail stops at? So when you have tight trail stops, let me show you three levels on your stops. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on stops, but I'll just quickly show some eyeball levels that you want to look at when you have a runner. So, so let me be clear. If you put two contracts short here, and the rollover from resistance, you took peeled one off down here, you faded the bottom, you would have got out of one contract there. I'm guessing that would have been right around probably 10 ticks, plus or minus a couple of ticks, right? There's leg one of your two contract trade, short on that bar, covering half of your position or getting out of one right there, yes? Now, it broke the support, it went even lower, so now we have a runner engaged. So when you have a runner engaged, there's several stops. Now, one of the stops, if you ever notice when we call tight stops in the room, they tend to be right around this area right here, this, this final uh, line before you get to the outermost mid uh, band. Generally speaking, if you follow this line on a, on a running trade, your tight stops will kind of fall right in there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you always, uh, on the runner trades, you might hear other things like a little bit looser stops would be here or Watch these levels, one, two, three, and we'll call them out. So another one tends to be kind of right around the stealth line. See this little stealthy line here that's red? That's a little bit, generally the stealth line will fall somewhere around halfway between the price and this line right here and the mid band. And the loosest stops when you have a runner in place is at or around the mid band, simply because you're looking for a roll if you're short up in here. And, and we all know that if, you, if you're not in it, so you wouldn't have stops up here and you're looking to get in, we're looking for a roll to get short. Okay, now while we're watching this, let me drag down another chart and let's watch it simultaneously. Let's put up uh, NASDAQ right next to it. Okay, I want to show NASDAQ right next to the YM chart in real time. This is kind of nice doing a webinar where we can see things moving around, huh? as opposed to after hours, where you have to kind of watch what happened. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. It's nice. It's different, huh? You know, to have a have a live market with data and everything, as opposed to after hours, we're just kind of going back what through whatever happened. All right, so here is, um, 
let me put some lines on here to help you out. Here was the resistance level when we started to break down right up in here. Now, just a quick word about uh, for, for everybody who's new uh, or visiting. Uh, we have quite a few of you in here. You, you, when you're looking at a support or resistance level, you have to kind of, I'd say, kind of thread the needle, so to speak. It's never going to be perfect. I mean, you're never going to, I mean, occasionally you'll have a line where all the candles just hit perfectly right on that line. And it's pretty clear to put the support or resistance line right where the candles are. But in a case like this, where some slightly go above it and some are a little under it and some are a little under it and some wick right to it, you kind of got to pick your spot here, right? <clears throat> we can see just like YM, there was a couple of support levels as she started to set up this lower range uh, coming out of that uptrend, just like all the equities did. Got a level right here. So here's your lines. So when you're in a downtrend, what do you do? How, do you, how are you trading this in a downtrend? We have our support and resistance lines. How are we trading it with two contracts? What are we doing to enter? What is our primary mode of entry when we see a sideways to downtrending move? What is our mode of entry and how do we trade it? We'll give you 10 seconds. 10 seconds on the clock. <clears throat> yeah, right, exactly. You're shorting it. You're shorting rollovers at resistance. Yeah, short pullovers to resistance. Exactly. Just checking to make sure everybody's awake. Hello. <laughs> Take a shot of espresso. Try to wake up. I know it's long. It, some of you probably uh, long in the tooth in the day here. Got up early and traded. So give you a little break today. Yeah. Yeah, so you draw your support resistance lines. This is ridicule, really critical. You know, if you're going to see where these swings are, I mean, you've got a lot of things helping you. You have the, the swing indicator. We have predictor. We have the bands. <clears throat> So visually, it helps to see it, but you know, really, would that take like five seconds to put three lines on there? And what this does, what the lines do, is it gives you a little bit of form and structure. Form and structure. It helps you see visually where you're going to take trades. So each one of these was a short. Here's a short. Here's a short. Come down. What you're trading two contracts. Where's our targets? You know, we're short in resistance. Our target. Our first targets are right here. This level of support. And then just like YM did over here, we broke it. <clears throat> Excuse me, leg two for the runner. Leg two broke down here. Now you can see that we're putting in some other swings. So where's a good spot for your stops on YM if you were still short? Where would you have your stops? I would say a close above here would be good, right? So you're kind of halfway between the mid band and uh, current price. Close above 50, 51 would get you out on your, your YM shorts from up here on the rollover from resistance, yes? We already hit one target. Notice that little swing, that little shelf held as resistance on the wick of that candle. Now, where would our stops be on the NASI short? Two contracts. Let me show the short setups here. You had, technically had short one. Here, I'll just quickly show them on NASDAQ. You had your box up here just above the mid band. Trade one. Trade two arguably is right here. Or you could still be in this one. You know, if you had a loose stops, you probably didn't get out, but the, there's there's your you peel one contract here. And then you had a runner that stopped out, leg two. Where's the next short on NASI? Where's the next setup? Right here, the rollover. Use your tools, your line tools, your ray tools, your boxes. This one, this second or, second or third short here in this box actually popped through that little support level. So you did fill on your scalper uh, first contract, and then the second one would have stopped out up in here. Right? That's what you do. Pop your first target. You get your stop down close to break even where you got in. Then you engage the runner. Runner takes you out. Here's trade number four, short right here. Close uh, on close on one of these two bars here, depending on where your box was. Short hits the scalper target. Tr contract one comes off right here, right? Comes right through it. Comes up, checks it. Where's our trailing stop? Now, where would you put? Quick question for the team. Make sure everybody's still awake here. Hey, Rome, folks, I'm coming in late. Don't worry, we got a late start. We'll run it a little bit over today. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll get plenty of trades in here. Plenty of trades in. All right, where now? If you were short Nasdaq. 
and you had one contract left on, where would you put the trailing stop? Give me 12 seconds. Where would you put the NASDAQ trailing stop if you were still in it with one contract? Take a look at the chart. Just call out a level. It's coming back up to check it. This is real-time uh, real data. Coming right up to it. Where would you put your stops on NASDAQ if you still had one contract short? Look at it this. Think of it this way, and this is part of the reason I put the lines on there. Where theoretically should it hit its head and roll to keep you in the short? Same with YM over here. Coming right up to it. It's helping you. Right at the swing. Right at the mid band. Some people calling out 29, 34, very 35, 50, various levels. Good. Here's our swing, and here is the mid band. Okay, let me let me blow this up so we can really kind of see what's going on. Now, if you're not in this, what are you looking for here? And that's a very good level. Now, that's very loose stops. We all know that, right? If you your tighter stops follow that last line in the sand, so to speak, here, you would have been taken out right here. So some of you with the tight stops would have already been out. But here you're looking for a rollover short, yes? Just wick 29. It's trying to roll, so we'd be looking to take a short there, yes? Here's YM. We talked about a couple of different stop levels. If you had tight stops here at this line, it would have wicked you out and you'd already be out. We talked about going a little looser. There's your roll on NASI. If you did bar flip, you're in it, right? Does this make people nervous, by the way? Let me let me just, just uh, take a quick uh, poll of the group here, the team. Those mid bands roll make you nervous. Anybody get nervous taking those? Let me give you a little tip. I Skype with a couple of traders this week about this very topic. You know what you can do? Let's say that your default stop is 12 ticks. So if you shorted, uh, let's do some rough math here. Uh, 24 plus yeah, 12 ticks would put you way up here. Now, when you're shorting a rollover like this, do you need to have a 12 tick stop? Your initial stop. Does it need to be 12 ticks? Does it have to be way up there at 32? What do you think? You're shorting a roll over here. Do you have to have your stop way up here? Yes or no? What do you think? You got in on a bar flip. And quite possibly, maybe you aren't even in it yet. You may be sitting there boxing it in and saying, well, you know what? It's got to rise to the downside. It's got to break that. So technically, you might not be in it. No, you don't need to put a 12 tick stop on a, on a trade like this. Sure, you can give it some wiggle room. I mean, you can let it come up into here if you wanted to. What is that, six ticks? Some people I know don't give it any wiggle room. If you got in on a bar flip and you're in it, you might put it just above where that wick is right there. Now, the logic behind that is this. For those of you who are very risk averse, in other words, you, you're nervous about getting st stopped out all the time. You hate these big stops. You know, you're always flipping in and getting out, and you're taking these big hits, and you don't like that. Well, then go ahead and put a tighter stop on it. Let it take it, and then look for reentry, right? Because it's quite possible if it takes this little swing out here, it could go back up to here, and it could quite possibly go all the way back up to here and roll at that prior Support resistance swing, yes? Is that helpful having those lines on the chart to see that? Yeah. I use them all the time. Does everybody understand that? So if you put tight stops and it takes you out, you can always look for reentry. Now, YM is kind of behaving itself over here and just sitting underneath that swing where we said to put the stop above that wick of that candle. And we all know that if it breaks that, we would stop out. Here Again, the tight stops are already out right there. Tight stops already stopped out. You see how you find the wick as it's trying to roll? We do that all the time. You know, if you get into a trade or maybe it comes down, you know, what can happen? We'll watch this in real time and see what it does. But the other thing it can do for you is this, is that you might, you might roll and you'll see this all the time. You'll get a little pop down like that. You know, you get filled and you get a couple of ticks in it. You know, you can, if it starts to pull back against you and you want to get out, you can just flatten it. You got two contracts on. Let's suppose your scalper target. Let's talk about that for a second here. Trading this range. 
support to resistance. Support we see now is down here. Okay, now you're short. You're still short. You're short from the, the roll at the mid-band, short from a bar flip, and you're short from the box. <clears throat> Sometimes it'll pop to here. And the reason you want to fade that bottom down there so some of you have some some of you have quick trigger, quick trigger uh, targets. I know you, some of you don't put eight or ten ticks on that first contract. Some of you might pop as much as little as four or five ticks. So you're looking for that quick pop and then get your stop done real fast. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. How many of you do that? Just a quick pull on your first targets. What what generally are your first targets? Four, five, six, or do you or you hold them up around that eight, ten, twelve area? Anybody? Just type in a number. Your first contract, if you trade two contracts, what, um, what's your scalper target, generally speaking? I, I know it varies on depending on support and resistance and the instrument you're trading and the time of day. I know there's many factors in, involved there. Um, but generally speaking, okay, we've got a good mix here. Todd likes four or five. Jonathan G likes five. Wow, prevailing number is five. Peter... Kenneth likes five to seven. Minaj way out of ten. Adam says if I can get super fast ten ticks, I'm in it and out. Good. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, let's mix it up. Let's drag oil down here and see what's happening. Right here. Right here. All right. We'll keep an eye on these other two, but let's do this. Let's throw oil in the mix real quick here. Let's throw crude oil in the mix right here. And let's ask a question from the team right now. Based on what you see on the chart on the far right hand side over here, what is what is now the trend on crude oil? Up, down, or sideways? And that's part halfway kind of a quasi trick question, by the way. I intentionally asked it that way to see how everybody responds. Are you looking to buy oil? Are you looking to short oil, so up or down, or is it sideways? I'll give you five more seconds. Crude oil chart right here, right-hand side. What is oil bilio doing? What say you, team? What do you say? Uh, we'll give you four more seconds. Up, down, or sideways? All right. Pretty much everybody has responded with uptrend you're looking to buy. Good. So let's do a quick analysis on, on how we come to see this. Let's start to the left and work our way to the right. Here we were in an uptrend. We all see that, right? And we see this pattern a gazillion de million times, right? Comes down, and you should just, I mean, if, if you it can commit any uh, price pattern to memory, this is this is really this is really critical and cool right here, right? This one we just looked at on YM and Nasdaq. Look, comes right down to here. Bumps back up. The bump in and of itself, of course, is not important, but we make note of the fact that we cannot get back to where? Yeah, to the swing. So so these are clues. Let's pretend we don't know what's going to happen. Let's pretend we don't know what's going to happen. And we see the market, and this happens all the time, on, on especially on, on, uh, on, on trend moves long protracted trend moves you get you get you get this final thrust we get this final push all the way to 77 pulls all the way back right close to the mid band right here see it let me take these let me take these off here for now so we can see it all together right pulls back pulls back holds above the mid band wicks right down to 55 missed the mid band by two ticks bar reversal up now this is what's important. Notice what's going on here. Look, 
And you can watch this in real time. If you have your own charts up and you're watching this, you can see it yourself in real time. Look what happens here. Here's the swing, and it gets to right here. So you could have gotten long. You could have boxed this in or used your tools. You got, it, by hook or by crook, you were long, right? And you got up here, and you got your scalper target with your two contracts right there, right? And then it does what? Comes back, checks it one more time, does a little wicking up to that, trying to get to 65. So by the time we get to 759 this morning on crude, you had the following swings coming into play after the second bounce. You had one there, one here, and one here. So this, what, what's, what's the critical takeaway? I want everybody to memorize this pattern, if you can, please. Commit this to your trading subconscious. It's really, really important. What is the market telling you here when it's doing something like this? Coming down, bouncing up, not quite getting to there. Coming down, bouncing up, not quite getting to there. What is this telling you when you get to this point right here? Yeah. It's running out of gas, huh? It's running out of gas up here. Theoretically, if the trend was going to continue, we should not only each of these bounces get at least back to here. What should it do? It should take it out and go higher up to the predictors, yes? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, it, David D., it could be the bears are winning. The, the other thing you could, it, that's going on, we all know uh, when you're in an uptrend, all the all the the bulls, the longies from down here in lower levels, when they start to take profits, and we take profits on our trade, the natural tendency in, a, in an up move for profit taking is to pull the market back. Everybody who's long from upper levels is taking their profits, so it's going to pull back. What happens is, if the buyers and the buy program stay strong and solid, and the algorithms kick in, then it would do this. And we'll look at that on NASDAQ and YM and some other charts. We'll, we'll, show where you, we'll show very clearly where you get trend continuation. It's clear as day when you see it, okay? But when you get this little waning effect where it's just kind of running out of gas up here, this is telling you that maybe the bulls aren't really in control anymore and there's more profit taking than expected. And then, uh, and then you get this little pop here where it definitely couldn't even get back to that 70 swing. This is, your, this is the clue. This is little footprints in the sand telling you we're running out of gas, and we may break the mid-band and go lower. Yes? That's what this is telling you. Pop up a chart and look at it. Look at it over the weekend. That's a critical, nice pattern to remember, and it's really simple, too. It's not complicated. It, you, right? See it? All right, let's go ahead and fast forward and see what happens here. I mean, we already saw the chart. We know what happens, but let's talk about it for a second. Some of you are looking to short it. I don't know that I'd necessarily short it right there because what's our rule of thumb? I'm going to say this all the time until it's really ingrained in all of our trading minds, right? As long as she stays above this outer deal here and bounces, we could still be in an uptrend. So that's kind of the line in the sand out here, right? Well, let's see what happens. Boom, we come right through the mid-band. Boom, we come right to the phantom. And then what do we do? We take the phantom out. Right here. Is this a trend change, yes or no? Five seconds. Punch the Y or the N right now. Y or N, boom. Keyboard, Y or N, boom. Four seconds. Yes or no? You sh that's how quick you should be. You should be able to look at a chart and within less than five seconds, instantly know whether you're taking a short or a long. Is the trend up or down or sideways? Did the trend change from up to down, yes or no? Two seconds left. Two seconds. Punch that keyboard. Boom. Wire in. One second. Time's up. Most of you got it. Good. Yes. Our rule of thumb is if it breaks that band down there, what's happening? What are the other visual clues we have that are telling us? Well, even before we came and broke that, broke down, what was the clues that we had right here that we talked about just two minutes ago? The buying was waning. This was telling us we're running out of gas. So we had a precursor to know that this break was probably going to happen. So when it broke, we weren't surprised, were we? No. 
We anticipated, and it did it. It came down through here, tried to get a bounce, and then just broke down. Now, help me out here. In addition to the fact that physically the price action broke the swing, what are the other visual clues? And there I can count one, two, three, four, possibly five other clues to tell you that the trend has changed. I'll give you 10 seconds. See if you can name one or two of them. What are the other visual clues on the chart to tell us that the trend is changing? See if you can get one or two of them. I see quite a few, but what do you see? What are other visual clues other than the price action itself are on this chart to tell you that the trend has changed from up to down? We'll give you 15 seconds on this one. Visual clues. Some of you might see three or four of them. I, I see them. That's why we created these indicators, right? We created the indicators to help everybody who uses the setups to see how to trade it. Visually, it's helping you to see. If you just had a plain bar chart up here, it'd be pretty tough to see what to do, yes? It would just all look the same. It would look homogeneous. It'd be hard to tell. Am I going up? Am I going down? Am I going sideways? But here we have visual clues. Time's almost up. What else is on here to show you? All right, here we go. Peter, wow, good. He named about three or four things there. Good. Minaj, a couple of three things. Doug, Doug weighing in. All right, there you go, Jonathan G. Pat, lower predictors. Red background, background color, lower lows, lower highs, mid-band dropping, ellipsis, stealth, red, red bars. Good. There you go. Perfect. Excellent. Most excellent. That's what we look for, right? That is what we look for. Visually, we have the price action. We all know that. We see the price action. That's a given. Um, but you got a nice, thick, chunky red stealth line here, right? You've got the mid-band is now stair-stepping down, following the price, right? All the bands themselves, all of the bands are stair-stepping down along with the mid-band, right? Somebody mentioned background color. Background goes to red. Predictor uh, lines start to drop. Lower highs, lower lows, and we have red bars. So, I mean, there we just rattled off, I think, four or five plus visual clues to tell you. So now you're looking for what? Shorts. We all agreed here. Everybody said yes. The trend has changed. Where are you going to short it? And then we'll get off this chart. Just give you 12 seconds. Just type in a number. I know most of you know the answer, and that's not the right way to do it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I don't have a lot more time here. Where are you going to short it? You're looking for a rollover. I'll help you out with that one. Tell you what. Let me do something else to help you. I'll do something else to help you. Stand by. I'll give you a line. Because let's pretend, let's all pretend. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple lines. Let's do that. Just like Gary does in the room. Let's put a couple of lines in here. How do you like those? Does that help? Time's almost up. You're looking for a roll. To do what? Right. To get short. You're getting short. Where's it got to go? Where's it got to go? Big Daddy-O. We got our lines. Time's up. A lot of you said 40, uh, 55, 48 to 50, 40, 40, 55. Good. I see quite a few ranges. Mid-band. Perfect. We all say to visualize our retracement region area, sweet spot, pitching zone, whatever you want to call it to more or less look something like this. I mean, we could get a shallow retracement as, as shallow as right here, yes? There's already a little shelf swing right there, right? We could get up at or near the mid band for a roll, and it might go a little higher, right? This is our pitching zone. We, we do that every webinar. We talk about that, right? This is where the sweet spot where you get a strike right down over the plate. Here you are. You're standing right next to here. You're a batter, and you're ready to hit, hit the ball. You're playing softball with your friends. You're playing baseball. And the strike zone's right here. Pitcher throws the ball right into here. So let's advance the chart and let's see what happens. We come down. 
bouncing off that 19 swing, holding, coming back up. Where's the price? Right now, where is it? Right now. Okay, I'm moving the chart. Let me double check that you can see it. I'm moving the chart back and forth. Can everybody see it? Checking movement of the chart. Everybody, I'm moving the chart. Can everybody see it? David D, I'm moving it back and forth. Moving the cursor. Swinging the cursor around. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Follow me now. Coming up, coming up, coming up. What had just happened? What just ha what's happening right now? Right now on this chart, what is happening right now? Here was the bottom, 8.30. 8, 8 Here we are 10, 15 minutes later, and where is the price? Yeah, right in the sweet spot of our entry zone. You're right in the middle of it. That pitcher just threw a 98-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle of the strike zone. Did you swing at it and hit the ball or not? Now, in the case of the region box for OT, we had short only, no longs, right? Because we all know it's possible uh, that it could go a little higher. You could get a spike up here, and we don't want to get long and get stuck up in here, right? Short only, short only on your OT over there. You toggle longs off, and you toggle shorts only on, yes? Comes right in the middle of the sweet spot of the strike zone. You take a swing, and boom! Now, before the market even moves, where is our targets on contract one? I'm going to go quick on these, like seven seconds, because I'm, I'm running out of time and there's some more stuff I want to show. Five seconds. Where's target one on this chart? Everybody should see it. All of you folks, everybody, even if you're new, you've been in here for, I don't know, over half an hour. We've showed this a million times. Where are we looking to cover part of our short? Say we have two on. You want to get out of one of them. Good. Time's up. 30, 31, 20, 25. Good, 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 good. Now, here we know, just a reminder, here is the absolute swing. We say we're going to fade it. Everybody knows what fade means, right? Fade means you come inside on a short. You come above where the swing is. You never rarely put it right on the swing. Now, it might plow right through that. We don't know. When we're taking that short, you don't know, right? If it's going to plow right through it, we don't know. But it could. You know, it could. Uh, but we have to be prepared to take our coin when it gets down there. So what I'm saying explicitly, just to be clear, is you want to go generally at least five ticks within the swing. So your target is going to want to be right in here. You're going to want to include the wick in the body of that candle, and now you're five, six ticks above. You're fading the cover. So you get, let's see where you get filled. Rolls over, you get filled on one of these bars right here, depending on how tight your uh, box was. You know, it could have been any one of these bars right here filled you short. So you're short. Say, I don't know, just under 40, 39. So, you know, 10 ticks, 8 to 10 ticks would put you right there. Let's see what she does. Dottles around, boom, goes down, and then takes out the bottom. Everybody see that? Contract 1 was filled right here. Off the table. Runner engaged. Now, 9 seconds. Where is your trailing stop? Right here. You took the short. You peeled the one, you got one left. Type in a number. Where's your stop? I want to see how tight and loose everybody is. We'll give you 10 seconds. Where's your trailing stop on your runner on that second contract? By the way, if you can master two contracts, it is the first gateway for you to get into trading multiples, where eventually you'll go to three and then four and then six and you know on up from there, eight, ten, and more. Because once you have this technique down, it's really easy to add on. You could trade three. Three could give you three, contra uh, three targets, right? Or you peel one off and you have two runners. Time's running out. Where's your stop? Six seconds. Where's your trailing stop on this one contract left off the rollover short? 
By the way, while you're doing that, uh, if you had painted the box a little tighter when you first got into painting this, as it unfolded, the box is unfolding here for you, you know, and you could have engulfed the candle too, it's possible, you know, depending on how you drew the box itself. The close of these wicks of these candles, I'm giving you a little extra time on your stop there, by the way, um, would not get you long. So that's the one thing I want to be clear about this, and this is why you toggle the longs off, okay? You toggle that off, because you could get wicks of candles uh, and um, body closes up in here where you don't want to get sucked into that long because it will roll over and head back down, right? So don't worry about the fact you're getting closes above the box. Okay, good. we got a whole mix of, of stops here. 26, 28, Doug and Jonathan, Pat at 25, 26, Peter coming in at 27, Minaj way up at 30. Uh, Adam at 26 and PW at 30. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, so what do we talk about? So, so there's a whole, you know, I mean, the 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 tightest of tight. Okay, if you're looking at trailing stops, is is a close above the last candle. Just just to be clear about that. Okay, I mean, if you were super tight, nervous, scalper, lock it down type trader, and you just don't want to give anything back, let alone five or ten ticks. You know, the, the most tightest stop you can go realistically, aside from just closing it at the swing itself, would be right here. In other words, as soon as the bar, let's go ahead and advance it. There. Like, super tight stop, trader, and some of this might be you, okay? Because some of you typed in a very tight number. I think somebody typed in 20. Adam? Yeah, okay. So you're super tight. I mean, you're, you're, you're like close above the bar tight. Many of you typed in up here around this 26 where this, this, uh, the stealth line is sitting along with that line right there. See it? That's a good, nice stop. stop. Loose, of course, is way up here. Now, why might you not consider going with a super loose stop in a situation like this? There's a couple of three reasons. See if you can name one of them. Why might you not want to go with real loose stops in a situation trading like this? There's a couple of three reasons. I was trying to find out why. Why? There's two, three reasons why. See if you can name one of them. We'll make this quick too. Seven seconds because we're running out of time here. Seven seconds. Why not have loose stops looking for big runners? Think about it. If you were sitting in your home office and you had a chart up and you had to make some business decisions on where you're going to put stops and how loose and where to take coin and all manner of things like that, you got to think about your condition, your situation. What situation are you in right now? Think about it. We talk about it all the time. What is the condition of the situation? Time of day, good, David D. Thrust size, right. Barely took out the bottom of that swing, Jonathan G. You don't want to lose your capital late in the morning. Good, time of day, yes, yes. You're in a little range here. It's 9 o'clock Pacific on crude oil. The pit's been open for three hours plus, yes? Through almost three and a half hours. Big moves were already made way over here, and you are in a range. So it's late in the morning, long in the tooth, barely broke that swing, and it's coming all the way back up, and you're trading in a range. So what I'm saying, just to be clear here, is that when you get long in the morning, let's suppose for some reason you had something early in the morning and you couldn't make the trading room. And you're looking at crude oil, and you're trying to pick off some trades. But it's late. Maybe you're on the East Coast, and it's 12, 1230. So you see in the chart, big moves have already been made, yes? But you still want to try to pick, peel off a couple of trades. So, so you, you step in, you see the sweet spot, it rolls over, you take the short, takes one out, and you stop out here. Now you're looking for re-entry. You don't put the loose stops up here. Don't give it, you know, 25 ticks, which is the whole, almost the whole range. You're range trading late in the, late in the morning. So you're taking that coin and you're looking to get back in. Everybody see that? I'm just uh, uh, maybe to put it another way, th this generally speaking, this is not runner time for oil. Let's see what happens. We come up. Where does it go to? Where's these bars? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Right here. Anybody? Quick. What is that? What is that? Where is it? Where is it? I'll help you. 
Where is it? Sweet spot. Yep, you're looking for a roll. You're taking another short. Boom, down she goes again. All right, good. Let's go back and see what's going on with our NASI and YM trades here. Stand by. Everybody see that? Any questions on that crude oil? Now, we are super long in the tooth for these equities. Um, you're, you're, you're coming into the close on a uh, Friday, you know, late morning. You got uh, two hours left of trading, barely even two hours left. It's a holiday weekend. Is Would this be a good time to load it up, and put a lot of contracts, and start taking some trades? What do you think? I don't know. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put 20 contracts short right here on YM. What do you think? I'm loading for bear. I think this baby's gonna roll, and it's time to load her on up. Bar close. Back up the wheelbarrow and shoot the shorts out. Here we go. Nazi. 15 contracts short right in here. There's resistance. We got the line. Anybody shorting it with me? Loading the boat? <laughs> David D says sure. Go for it. <laughs> No, 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 no. Look, you can already see what's happening. All right, here was our short from earlier. Remember? When we first started the webinar, we talked about these shorts, this rollover. It turned out to be very nice trades. Now, as he rolled, hit the first target, went down to a fresh swing, tight stoppy stoppy, stopped out there, looser stoppies, probably got you, you know, right up in here somewhere. By hook or by crook, you stopped out, okay, no, no matter pretty much where you put it, because it came all the way back up to the mid-band here. Same with YM. We had a couple of stop levels. Super tight was down here, remember? Looser was up here, and it took that too, right here. Got it. There's your roll. We're loading the boat short. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody knows I'm kidding. Yeah, this, this just like we said on crude oil, you have to factor in the time of day, the circumstances. Are you in a big run? Are you, um, is it trending? Is it chopping sideways? Those are all factors you have to weigh when deciding the risk that you're going to put on, how many contracts you put on, and where you get in and where you take your profit. So we did roll on NASI. We're rolling on YM. We can see that it's trying to get down to its little scalper target down here at this uh, little shelf it's putting in. Caught a roll. Just a little quick little target there. YM, that would be right here. Now, you can practice this in sim. You know, I mean, it's gonna, it might chop you around a little bit, but you could practice in sim. It's good practice to take these. Let's go back and look at early in the morning. Okay, I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at what happened in the morning right after the open, and then we're going to wrap, okay? Glad we got to do this today. Just a, just a quick quick feedback from, from, the, from the team here this morning. How, how do you like doing them in the morning as opposed to, uh, as opposed to at night? Anybody like the morning time? Is this convenient? Is it a problem? Do you like the live data? Just getting some feedback. How does everybody feel about that? Let me move these lines up a little bit here. Just getting some feedback from the team. See how you like the morning session. Better? Morning is better. Like it? Nice? Either way? Yeah, the webinars, Peter. Like normally we do them at 5 o'clock Pacific, so they're in the evening. And um, what happened was, of course, I had technical problems last night, so I rescheduled it to 10 a.m. today versus last night. And uh, when we do them at night, we have to look retrospectively at what happened because we don't, you know, the market's pretty much dead at 5 o'clock at night, so there's just really no data to look at as opposed to now. You know, it's still morning time, and we have data to look at. All right, tell you what, we'll mix it up. Throughout July, we'll mix it up. We'll do some in the morning, and we'll do some in the, some in the, uh, some in the evening, okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right, so let's look at what happened here. We'll take a look at the markets at, at the at the open. Here we can see. I'm going to do this very quickly, uh, and so we all get a a sense, and we can wrap up and get out of here. Here's our lines. This is pre-market. Here's midnight Pacific over here. So this is uh this is European trading overnight. You can see we had a little bit of a sell-off here, uh, midnight. Here you're at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. Put in a little bit of a range here, uh, 65 to 95, a little 30-tick range. See, it's kind of chopping around for about two, three hours. And then we punch up through here. So when we came in to look at it, if you're looking at a pre-market, the market would have looked like something like this. 
We get the spike, I'll help you out visually, everybody sees it. Background is now green. Bars are predominantly blue. Ba all the bands, including the mid-band, are blue and stair-stepping up. Background is green, stealth is green. We are looking for what? Based on our visual clues, we are looking for what type of trades? Are we shorting the market? Or are we looking to buy and get long somewhere? What do you think? What say you, team? Yeah, we're looking to buy. We're looking to get long on pullbacks. Right, exactly. Trend is up. Trend is up. Now, right here at uh, 6, right at 630, 630, 631, 632, we get this. Right here. Now, if you didn't get that, there was a second pause right here, and this is perfectly acceptable. It's not on the mid band, right? On, it's not on the mid band, right here. Box, secondary box, with a bias to the upside only. In case it decided to come back here and check the mid band or go lower, we're not shorting here. Long only. So you had a couple of shots here. You had this box right at the open. You had a secondary box at 634, 635, right here. Everybody see it? We got long. Across the board, we got long. Everybody remember that? Right at the open. Now, this is the thing that's, you know, let's let's play this out and see what happens. How many of you caught the long? How many of you missed out on it? Why don't you do this? Type in C for caught it, M for missed. It's two letters. C, you caught it. It doesn't have to be YM. It could be anything. It could be uh, ES or the Russell. All the, all, the, all the equities ran like big dogs. Did everybody catch those? C or M? Ooh, I see a lot of Cs but a few Ms. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask you a question. You had a big run, but let's suppose that you're missing it like a deer in the headlights and it's running. How are you going to get in to participate? It's one word. Well, technically, I guess if it's hype, hype, if it's hyphenated, it's one word. You could make it two words. One word. Pullbacks, retraces. If you miss the initial box, please, 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 a million times, please, please do not sit back like a deer in the headlights and let the thing run a hundred ticks and miss the whole thing and then kick yourself the rest of the morning because you didn't get in. Now, when we talk about retracements, what did we talk about just 20 minutes ago? What kinds of retraces can you have to get in? Are, here, let me phrase it a different way. Is the retrace always going to come back to the mid-band, yes or no? Is it always going to come back here? Here's the mid-band. We're moving up. Mid-band sitting at 29. Thrust up all the way. Fresh swing highs at 52. Is it going to come here? Is it safe to say, well, you know what? If Charles, I'll tell you what. If that thing got right, right here and came and sat right on that mid-band, I'm telling you, I'd get my box ready, long only, and I would jump right in that puppy, and I'd take that thing long. I'm telling you, that's what I would do. No. When you have a powerful uptrend, are you going to always get deep retraces? No. So we talked about what? The sweet spot. Draw your strike zone. You can physically put it on your chart. You can draw it on your chart. You can visually do it. However you want to do it, we realize that in powerful uptrends that it's not a given that a market is going to pull back all the way to the mid-band. It's just, it, sometimes it just doesn't. And we have to be prepared for that, right? So look here, let's let's run this up because we're, we're really running out of time here. Okay, let's, let's move forward. Let's move forward on this. All right, there's your sweet spot. Pulls back, wicks into it, fresh high, fresh high, fresh high. Pull back, pull back. What I'm saying, just to be clear, and it, some of you might be nervous doing this, and I understand it, but when it's running and you miss the initial entry down here, these pullbacks, these little tiny pullbacks, are chances to get in to participate. You don't have to use a mid-band box. You can use the line. You've got all kinds of different tools you can use. You know, all these pullbacks. And you don't have to be worried about getting stopped out 
because if you draw a box, you put a line, and it goes lower, right? We don't care because we're not short. Everybody's nervous about that. Well, Charles, it hasn't pulled back enough. I, I can't. I'm not comfortable getting in there. Well, then, okay. Say sorry and not, say say goodbye to a hundred tick run. Every single little pullback was a chance to get in. There should be nobody in this room today that said that they missed this 100-tick run because you missed it down here. Everybody should be saying, you know what, Charles, I, I, I see what you're saying. They were very shallow pullbacks, but I went ahead and took them. And I caught half the run. I got in here, and I caught half of it. we got a question on NASDAQ. Let's look at the NASDAQ chart. Stand by. And then we're going to wrap. Everybody see that? If it's early in the morning, this is the, this is the time where we make the coin, right? We're making the coin. We're locking it down. Big moves right at the open, a big volume. Here, let me get Nazi up here real quick so we can all look at the similar situation here. Here we go. Here's the open on NASDAQ right here. I think Gary had this chart up. I, I came in at, like, I think 6... 15 or 620, 620 something. Uh, so that was right here. That was right in here. In fact, uh, as I recall, we had a box sitting right here. Everybody remember? There was boxes right in here. Thir here was the original box. I remember that one. I actually took that. There was a 31 box probably right here and a 32 Band-Aid right in here. I mean, it's just sat there for like three, four minutes. And like, just like YM, you see that, Ed? Even if you missed the mid-band and you're just sitting on your hands not paying attention, you still had a pause right here, long only. See, I was a little more clear on, um, oh, you had Internet issues? Okay, well, you know, it, it, you know, if you can't connect to the Internet, obviously you can't trade. But it was a little more clear on NASDAQ that you were in a powerful uptrend because you'd come all the way from this, this lower consolidation level. Background was green, stair-stepping up, retracements right at the mid-band. This is just the heart of the sweet spot of taking the trades right here. Right here. Even if you put two on, two on, you pop up, you get your scalpy scalper, and then you engage your runner. Now, you know, you didn't have very modest pullbacks on NASI. You know, you had a couple right in here. You could have got in, Ed. You see that? You know, arguably right in here. When it's holding this outermost band and clinging to this line, when you see a pullback, you know, it doesn't look like much, but that's actually about 15, 20 ticks right there. You see that? This little pullback right here. Yeah, no, I know it's not getting to the mid-band, which is what you want. I understand that. But sometimes when you're in a just a – when those algos are pumping and the buy programs are running and it's hardly pulling back and you want to participate, you got to pull the trigger and find a spot to get in, okay? And then once you get put, – put your couple contracts on there, get your scalpy and then suck up your, your, your stop real tight. Follow, follow it up, follow it up, follow it up. Comes up, looks like it's going to run out of gas, just keeps going. A couple more pullbacks happen right here. Hopefully some of you grabbed them. We were calling them out in the room. I remember I was running, I was riding this whole thing. I'll tell you, I was over my goal by, I think, 730. This, this is goal makers early. This is one or two and done. Load the boat. Loading the boat on this one. There's another one for you. Retrace this one. You actually got close to the web, uh, to the, uh, to, to the mid-band. Wicked it. Just I remember calling out that level. Remember? Bouncing. Anyway. All right, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Sorry about the late start. We did get a, we did get a full hour in here, so that's good. Uh, any final questions? Final questions. Final questions before we wrap. We're going to wrap her up. Everybody have a great long weekend. We sent out the notice. We're closed. No webinar tomorrow. Markets are closed uh, uh, Monday. Uh, Independence Day holiday here in the U.S. Stay safe. Don't play with too many fireworks. Don't shoot them off in your backyard. Be careful. Just go look at them shooting in the sky, the big ones. like to go watch those with the kids. Sometimes we go. We might go to the city again, San Francisco. Doug asking, can you please tell me how to get OT? You know what? Let me do this. Let me stop the recorder, and then I'll answer a couple questions. Okay.